Hello YouTubers! What we are going to do today is we are going to use the foil quill that just came out to watercolor. Now I have been wanting to do something like this for quite a while. I adore these on Instagram. So I've been trying to figure out for a while a way to get the machine to draw and then um, you can watercolor on top of it. Um, the nice thing with this foil quilt is that it is, since it doesn't come off, you can watercolor right on top of it. So the machine does the um, drawing and then you watercolor on top of it out of problem. So I'm pretty excited for this and as you can tell I've had quite a lot of fun playing with it using different watercolor techniques for it. I adore this dress. It's not really cool. And then we get a draft too. I've, I've had fun doing this. So um, let me go show you what you need. All right, so in an effort to keep this video shorter, I'm not gonna sh go through the steps of foiling everything. I have another video and I'll link it up above to how to foil stuff from the beginning. But what I've been using is this mixed media paper. I've been cutting it in half and then foiling it. Just standard foiling. Um, I've been using, I got these, it's a little pack. I got them at Joann's. Um, it's five different colors and you get six sheets of each. So four by six sheets. I tend to like the metallic ones. Copper is by far my favorite. This is a copper one to foil these with. But it's just kind of, um, you can foil on bigger pieces of paper, absolutely. This was just an attempt to kind of make this a little bit cheaper. So, and then you need to use, um, I've been using mixed media paper, but you're going to need to use some kind of paper that is meant for watercolor. Um, because if not, it's just going to become a crumpled up mess. So, what I've been doing is ripping one of these out and then just cutting it in half. So that way you can foil you get two out of each piece of paper. This is the cheapest you're gonna find this is on Amazon. Um, it was only about six, seven bucks. It was 11, 12 at Hobby Lobby when I liked this past weekend. So you need that. And then I've been using the um, Tomboy markers. I do have a set of the knockoffs from Hobby Lobby, but like you really wanted to like these. This is the knockoff set, but I don't. <laughs> I got these on sale. They're like 12 bucks and you see all the markers. And I wanted to like them, but I hate them. I don't, it's not that I hate them. They're just, the tomboys are more expensive and they're nicer and there's a reason they're more expensive because they're nicer. So these are the um, dual tip brush pens. They're pretty popular. Um, so you got a fat brush on one end and then you've got a little one on the other. So I think this is the set of 10. It also came with a bleeding, bleeding brush or bleeding pen marker, whatever it's called. And then this is a water brush. And see, what you do is you unscrew it. And then I've just popped this top off and poured water in it. Um, I don't know if you can, it just seemed easier to me. But you fill it up with water and you use it. The nice thing with the Tombow markers is they're self-cleaning and so is the blender tool. So you can blend in and then um, you don't have to worry about them becoming some permanently strange color. So these are the ones I've been using. Um, I also have a squirt bottle. This is from Hobby Lobby in the tie-dye section if you need to know that. These um, you can get on Amazon and I will definitely leave the link. There's more colors and sets than just this one. There's like a bright one and a galaxy one. You might be able to find them cheaper at some place like um, Joann's or Michael's if you can use the coupons on them. Know that most of the stores have them under lock and key so you will have to find a human or go do the order to store kind of thing because they um, are normally under lock and key. I guess they wander off a lot. So let's get started. All right, so truth in YouTube editing right now. I did the last video like this because I'm right-handed and you can't see anything. So we're back and I'm gonna do this again, but when you see the little wrap-up section, it is not gonna be this flower, it's gonna be a different one because, well, I messed up. <laughs> so what you're gonna do with these markers is you're basically gonna loosely kind of color in and since we're watercoloring, 
it doesn't have to be exact. Now, if you put the markers together on their own, see like the orange is kind of blending down into my yellow already. And that'll work on, on that'll blend on some degree. Now, if I put my, so say I want this to be really, really light, I would just really lightly color in and then we use the marker, either the marker or the um, water to feather it out. If you want it to be stronger, color in more of it and you won't feather out the color as much. Now you can use this um, blender brush, blender bleeder, whatever I've managed to call it. And all it does is when you go to, it'll blend on its own. And it doesn't blend as much as the water does, but it does blend. The other nice thing is that you can come over here and clean it off on the paper towel and then go and use it with another color and it's not gonna get all funky. So that is one option for blending. But the more watercolor effect comes from the water brush. And what you do is, what I like to do is get it to drop like some water onto my paper towel and then I come back in and kind of feather it. And there is no secret to this one. This is just mostly um, trial and error and how much you like the look of it. Um, the biggest secret to this is just trial and error. Like, what do you like? What do you not like? Um, and then the another nice thing is you can come back in here. So say I don't like this so much. I can feather it out some more. I made a bunch of these at this point. Some I like and some have totally hit the garbage can. So, and you can determine how much you want to feather it out. Do you want it to be darker or lighter? And the big thing is to wait for it to dry. Because when you wait for it to dry, then it turns it turns into kind of a different, not different color, but it, the colors change a little bit. Uh, once it dries, you can go back in with the water brush and play with the color some more. You can add some more color to it. Um, if you just add a bunch of water, you can um, really get the color to dissipate and try again. You do have to be careful that your paper doesn't turn to mush at that point too. Um, the paper towels also, you can use them to blot up some paper, blot up um, some of the paint if you really, really hate it. Or you can just totally make another one. <laughs> Alrighty, so that is our finished project. Uh, I adore daffodils, so I, I very much love this one. Now, this daffodils, these two were you done using a different technique, where you scribble the markers on bags and then squirt water and flip them for a, a different look. This one was done with the same one where you brush and then squish everything together. This was done with the paper bag technique, but not a lot of water. So I love, the other thing I love with the markers is that if with paint, I tend to do too much and end up with a giant muddy looking mess. So with the markers, it's a little bit easier to control them, where they go and how much you wanna blend. So you still have a distinct looking color set and everything else. So we can do more videos with more techniques if you like them. If you don't, well, that's okay too. We'll move on to something else. But I'm, I have so enjoyed doing this, you have no idea. <laughs> So please like and subscribe to our channel and we will be back with more videos on whatever soon. Bye.